21st century China is modernizing at breakneck speed. For the last century or so, it seemed that China was merely trying to catch up with standards of science and technology set by the West. But if you take the longer view, if your perspective is not a few hundred years, but a few thousand years, by any measure it was China that was at the vanguard of science and technology. In fact, it turns out that many Western inventions were not inventions at all, but borrowings from China. If we want to explain the blossoming of knowledge in the West, it pays to look east to what the Chinese knew. Modern China's distinctive identity has evolved over thousands of years. It is one of the oldest and most successful civilizations, a society whose strength depended on science and technology. In fact, from 600 to 1500 AD, China was the most technologically advanced society on Earth. Remnants of that ancient legacy are scattered throughout China, diffused by time. But if you know where to look, you can glimpse the grandeur of China's technological past. As an author and avid student of history, I've traveled here in pursuit of China's earliest inventions and scientific innovations, in a quest to learn what the ancients knew. Like all budding cultures, the Chinese gathered knowledge through careful observation and experimentation. They watched the endless cycles of the sun, moon and stars, and marveled at the force of nature. Over millennia, their understanding of the elements grew, and the Chinese found ways to harness the powers of earth, metal, wood, water, and fire. Normally, we think of fire as a destructive element, but it can also be a force for creation. When you throw something in the flames, it will usually change for the worse, but sometimes it will change for the better. One of mankind's oldest dreams is the dream of alchemy, the dream of creating gold out of base elements. Now, no one ever figured that one out, but from the flames, the Chinese were able to produce something golden. Early Chinese alchemists believed the secret to eternal life and powerful medicines lay in combining just the right ingredients over a fire. Some recipes even called for heating concoctions up to a year. Around 300 AD, the alchemists began to create elixirs of sulfur, saltpeter, and various plants. According to their notes, the mixtures produced a lot of smoke, but really weren't anything you'd want to swallow without a guarantee of immortality. It took another 700 years of singed beards and charred houses before researchers learned to add pure charcoal to sulfur and saltpeter. Blending the three made what they called Huo Yao, the fire drug. By sheer coincidence, they discovered gunpowder. The new invention created bright sparks, and so the Chinese used it for celebration. They invented the world's first fireworks. Today, fireworks are still a Chinese specialty. I visited this modern factory near Beijing to find out if they still follow the same thousand-year-old recipe. The head chemist, Mr. Yin, uses gunpowder as the base for all his creations. To make it, he carefully measures the basic ingredients of saltpeter, sulfur and charcoal using the same proportions and tools as the early alchemists. When Marco Polo came back to Europe, he told a tale of a fabulous black powder that created an explosion so loud you wanted to plug your ears and throw a cloak over your head. At the time, Europeans were inclined to dismiss his stories as mere fables, fantasies dreamed up by an overheated imagination. But the stories were true, although it was many years before the Europeans unlocked the mysteries of gunpowder. But at the time Marco Polo came back, the Chinese had known about this stuff for centuries. Once the firework gunpowder is mixed together, it is formed into tiny pellets that are carried to specially designed rooms for making fireworks. Only one person and four kilograms of gunpowder are allowed in the room at one time. Fireworks are a dangerous job. 
Every year, hundreds of people die in factory explosions all over China. To reduce the risk, the workers cover their hair to avoid static electricity and stand on rubber mats to prevent sparks. Quickly but carefully, they arrange the gunpowder pellets in layers into a hard outer shell. After the shells are packed, they are wrapped with strips of paper and glue. This one factory turns out tens of thousands of fireworks each year. After fireworks, it didn't take long for gunpowder to find its new destiny, war. For thousands of years, arrows were the primary weapon in Chinese warfare. But around 1150 AD, during the Song Dynasty, someone came up with the idea to tie a bamboo tube packed with gunpowder to the arrow and add a fuse. Next, they attached a tiny iron weight near the feathers to tilt the arrowhead up for a longer flight. It was the world's first rocket. The rockets gave the emperor a much needed edge over his enemies. But the idea was in its infancy. Over the next two centuries, Weapons designers found ways to maximize the rocket's potential. To make it more powerful, they drilled holes straight through the center of the gunpowder so that the powder burned evenly and shot the gas backward, causing the arrow to streak directly forward. Then they constricted the opening at the back, raising the pressure inside the tube to create even more thrust. This type of rocket had a range of up to 10 football fields. But firing one rocket at a time is not very effective. So they developed a multiple rocket launcher. We've got a modern replica here, and if it doesn't look that devastating, well, even the original can't have been that powerful. But they didn't have to be, because the arrows were tipped with poison. We know from illustrations that they fired them a bit like this, shooting from the hip. Now, I'm not quite game to do that, so we're going to put it down, see how it works. These rockets used a non-explosive gunpowder which simply propelled the arrows forward. Although they didn't explode, they did enough to stun and amaze the emperor's enemies. By the mid-14th century, the Chinese found a way to make the rocket launcher itself fly. They developed a rocket called Fire Dragon issuing from the water. The dragon was a bamboo tube with a carved wooden head about five feet long. The rockets at its front and rear contained gunpowder that propelled the dragon forward. Just before the rockets burnt out, they ignited fuses of arrow rockets hidden in the dragon's belly, which then shot out of its mouth, destroying the enemy. It's an ironic twist that gunpowder was created to give eternal life. The legacy of gunpowder remains a blessing and a curse. Here at the fireworks factory, it's a bit of both. You need nerves of steel to work here. This place is making me a little nervous because the smallest spark is going to send us all sky high. Mr. Yin's gunpowder recipe differs from the one used in the very first fireworks and rockets. That stuff burned and sparked, but it didn't explode. The formula they're using, however, dates from the 13th century, when the Chinese figured out that by increasing the proportion of saltpetre to about 75%, gave them really explosive gunpowder. Before then, Fireworks had been just pretty lights, mere fizz, splutter and sparkle. But with this, however, and that's what I'm worried about, you get a really big bang.